Good morning. It's Friday morning and I am ready to sew. How about you guys? Hopefully uh, you'll enjoy this new segment. This is the intersection project and it's part five. So we're just going to keep working on this and integrating different pieces and you know everything here can stand alone. You can use it in any place that works for you or you can add a couple of the pieces and start putting them together and it'll be fun. So let me show you what I've got so far. So what I've done is I've got a small circle that is capping this area and in addition to that this border here is going to come through there. So whatever ends up in the border right there will intersect that circle and so we'll navigate around that space in order to put that in. I might even add another quarter inch out here because I am going to fill this border. So I might want something to set these two areas apart and I'll be able to decide that later. I haven't quite got that far yet. So let me show you the first design as we go. We're going to go ahead and use a little different um, intersection of the circle and you can tell that my circle's a little off on the paper, but it's nice and straight on the fabric. And what I want to show you is this is a little narrower than a space here. So what the goal would be is we kind of want to create um, a little up and down movement here. So we're just going to start right here. We'll go ahead and we'll put a little arc, a little arc, just like this, and we're going to go around. Splitting up the circle like that is helping us to create that space. And if I make this even wider, then I could make the arc bigger, but my arc is gonna be narrow because my space is only about a half of an inch. So as we sew, we'll fill this entire circle right here with these little shallow arcs like that. Because of the way this works, we're going to end up being able to come all the way back to the beginning, which is exactly what we want. So let me just lift it up so you can see it, right? So this is sewn, but you could always just mark this. If you did not want this line, you could mark the circle and just sew these little arcs. So that would be another way that you could change the density of the design. Now we started um, right here, I guess I'll put SP for start point. So now I can come out and then I can start going around on the rest of the circle, right? So we'll come back to this when we come over here, but let's go like this over and we're going to go in and out like this, in and out, in and out. So you can see just by changing the width of your circles or the depth of the arcs here, we can really change how this design looks. And these ones on the outside are longer, they have to be, in order to travel. Okay, and so this is continuous, that's what I like about it. And the lines will go away, so it doesn't really matter too much if you're exactly on this line. What's going to matter is more when you come in, if you could try to get to this point. Even if this point ends up like a little off, as long as we try to connect the dots, that's what is going to be the visual character of this. And I just love it. I think it's so fun. This is a really pretty design. And then we're back where we started and then we can close it. So that's going to be our first one today. And hopefully <laughs> it'll be a little better balanced than what I've done on paper. All right, let's try it. Let's see where we got. So you can see mine's a little bit bigger and I'm actually going to mark it real quickly and I'm going to use my crosshair square. So that, this one right here, this is the eight point crosshair, right? And so that means that this space, you know, is going to be a little different. So I'm just gonna put this on the center and I can make as many lines as I want. 
And what I'll do is I'll start making some lines and then we can decide if we want to add more based on the spacing. All right, sorry, I gotta get my chair. <laughs> Configured. Okay, here we go. So I'm right on the line and there's a straight line right here, right? And then we're kind of using that. It doesn't exactly match this. It's the center of the circle. That's really what we're, we're focusing on. So let's just put these lines in. And I'm gonna mark this one just so that I have it as the reference for when we put the other ones in. Okay, with this tool, this is the crosshair square. So right there, you can see there's a line in the middle. So if this is the channel, that is the line in the middle, right? And we want to split each of these a little more. So now I'm going to line up this middle white line on the line that we drew and keep the center in the same position. So I'll have to scoot it around, get it all lined up. So there's my white line and I'm in the center and I'll just check my spacing. Oh, I have the wrong one lined up, there we go. I was like, none of them are lined up. Okay, so purple line on the white, purple line, purple line. So we know that we're aligned right in the center, so let's just make some other lines. And if you don't want to do this or you don't have this tool, so that's fine. You don't have to, you can just, Split it visually, just make some tick marks, and just go with it, it's fine. You know, it doesn't have to be so perfect. All right, so let's see what we got here. What do you think? I think we need some more lines, right? I think this is a good size right here. This one is actually split in the middle, so let's try and get to that level. That means that we will have to mark it two more times. So let's see if we can get there, right there in the center. So now this one's on the purple line and this one will split this right in the middle. One more time. And we said right in the middle and right in the middle. And I don't think we need that line, but let's double check, make sure we got them all. So we need one here, here, and here. And then let's just see what happens. We'll get those all set. Right there. Okay, and that should give us the, a good spacing for us to put our design in. I think those are reasonable spaces for us to be able to travel. All right, just double check it real quick. I think this one's a little faint, so I'm just gonna mark this one more time. I wanna make sure I can see it when we're sewing. Okay, so I think everything looks good. I'm just checking real quick. It's about even. Make sure that I don't use that as the line because that belongs to something else. And let's get started. All right, I'm gonna kind of put you a little more top down so you can kind of see what we're doing, get you in a little closer. Hopefully that's a good view. Okay, let's start. Hmm, I think we'll start on this side because this looks like a better spacing right here because this was our start and then this will just kind of graded in on this side. Now we'll have to travel a little bit obviously because we don't have a full circle so we can't quite go back to the beginning. So let me show you what we're looking at real quick. Let's get our fabric bunched up, get it on the Sew Steady table, get it supported. So this is our first little arc right here. So we're just going to grade in gently, nice and smooth. If you need to stop, try to stop once you get to this next point. You don't want to try to stop in the middle. Just try to make as smooth of an arc as you can. Look ahead when you're doing it. Just use your visual and look ahead so that you can try to stop right on that point. Remember, all the purple lines are gonna go away, so it's not a big deal. Just nice and easy. I'm not being really good. I want it to be, you know, smoothly arced, and I'm getting a little waffle. But just sew some more, it'll all work out. Once we get these in, this will help kind of set 
the spacing. Oh, I stopped in the middle. Darn it. I hate that. All right, and then let's make sure you can see. I think we'll try to put some of this towards the front because that'll get us most of the way here. I'm going to start sewing just a little bit faster so that I can get a smoother arc a little bit and adjust my hand position. And this one I'm not going to make it come to the end because it's in the middle, right? It's halfway. So let's just scoot over. And we'll come over here. So that's the line. And, oh darn it, I should have done my arc. <laughs> what am I doing? Okay, let's go back. Right here, we're gonna arc into the line, right? So here, and now we're gonna try to connect it right there. And just smoothly come back. And then arc over to the next one. So same thing, smoothly try to come into the intersection. And this is where, even if you're off of the line, just try to come into the point of this right there now. Wherever that intersection is, that's what you want. So I have to be careful. My purple line here is not the pink line. So I think I, I went a little wonky right there. We'll fix it. We'll just put an extra stitch in there to kind of cover it up. into the pink line. And I'll tell you something else. You guys know me, right? If you can't make it straight, make it crooked on purpose. It's okay. You could make it like a leaf shape where one side is um, curved one way and the other side's curved the other way. And then that kind of eliminates having to be so perfect. How we doing? I almost couldn't find my line there. I was losing track of it because it's fading already. Hop over to the point. All right, let's just keep on going. that we don't have to rotate. I do rotate so that you can stay in view, but you'll see right here, like if I just kept going, the, the hard part here is being able to look at what is behind you and make sure that you can see the visual marks that you've made. So for example, like right there, if I can't see it, I can just put a little bit more of a dot. So this is also really great for practicing control. You know, you're trying to make your arc fit exactly to this spot. So as you're going, you can be going slowly. It's okay. And I think this spacing right here is about correct enough for me to put the arc right there. So we'll just do that. All right, so what do you think? Do you like that? We'll flip it over in a little bit. We're gonna come um, in here and then we have something that we want to do right here. So I'm going to tack this off really quick. And we'll just, I don't think we'll jump it. Let's go ahead and just cut it because we have to start again in the center anyway. That way we won't have any threads hanging off. Okay, let me get that cut. And that design works at any size. Did I cut it? No, I didn't just would not cut. Okay, let's get some threads off of here and we'll, we'll see how we did on the back. I always like to turn it over because then there's not all these lines and marking and thread everywhere. Okay, ready? I'm praying.
I love it. It's pretty. Isn't that fun? And if you have any areas like that are not connected, because I can see I have like one right there that's not connected. If I want to, I can come back in or not. Remember, you're going to be sewing a lot more, so nobody's going to really be like, oh, look, you missed it. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's flip it over. Let's flip it over. I'm in a good mood today. We had an awesome rain last night. My garden is so happy. And I got some great pictures of amazing lightning strikes. And fortunately, you know, nothing severe enough, I think, for our area to be a concern. But it was really, really awesome. Love the rain. Okay, we have a lot of lines here now, which is kind of hard visually, I think. But let me show you what I want to do. I have this really cool ruler. It's called the six inch spiral. And where did I put it? Did I set it down? Okay, here we go. I'm using this. I like this because this automatically will split this circle into whatever segments I want. And if I use the widest segment, this part, like if I hook the foot on there and I use this line as the reference, Ooh, sorry. <laughs> That's going to make each of the segments exactly split into 45 degree um, segments. So I can use it either way. I can put it on this way and just start going around, or I can flip it the other way, start on the other side and go this way. So it just depends on which direction that you might want yours to go. Um, let's see. How do we want ours to go? What do you think? Well, we'll we're going to do it from the center here, but I'm, I'm in my mind, I'm kind of thinking maybe we want to put this uh, border in there. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think so? Because we have this right here, and I don't want to just crowd that. So let's mark it real quick, and we'll leave that space for something else. Okay, let's do that. Let me grab my straight edge so we can mark it. Do you guys see what I mean? Like if we make our curve right here, then whatever we put in, and if we don't put a space right here, it'll crowd right into there, which I don't want to do that. I want to leave a little space, so I'm going to. And that, we can still line it up pretty close to the center. We'll kind of just fudge it a little bit right there. Ooh, that's going to be weird, don't you think? Yeah, I like it. I'm doing it. <laughs> it is kind of odd, but I don't care. That's part of our whole goal is this intersection piece. So we're still going to use that as the center position because that's the center of the circle. And we'll just fill in around here. So let's start doing it. So right now, that means when I put this on, I have to fake that center because that is inside of that boundary. So let's just do that. Let's just put our, our, if that was the space, we would sew out to right there. And that's where we would end up. So there's going to be a little fudging here, which is good. All right, I like this particular template because it allows us to sew back and forth. So I'm going to look back here. Where's my little, my little dot? Oh, he's right under there. So he's like right there. Okay, good enough. So then I'm just going to pivot a little bit. Make sure that he's kind of in there. And we'll sew out and back. Once I get the first line in, I can rotate this way and I can put that wider line on there. So I'll just fudge it a little bit. I, I don't want to create so many spaces. So we'll just, we'll just do a few. But I want to create some spaces that we can fill. So I think we need to scoot across our boundary a little bit here. And then we'll line this guy up.
So that outer boundary that we made right here is going to be really powerful because it's going to separate everybody and make them have their own space. All right, so I'm just lining it up. Right here is my little center point, so I'm kind of getting lined up right on that right here and then I can sew the next one so I went a little too far but no big deal come back in if you don't feel comfortable with the straight line you can use this and so I think I need one more stitch to come over so just scoot over a little bit and then we can just keep going we'll keep um, adding the next piece right there so I'm right on that center position Make sure that we're touching. And then we'll just keep going up. I don't know if we need one more or not. We'll see. Nope, I don't think we do. I think this particular piece is going to fill that exactly right to, the, to that corner. Okay, so let's start just putting some fills in there. One of the things that I think works really great with these is if we have some kind of a denser fill and then a lighter fill, denser fill, lighter fill each way around. And as we come back over here, we'll put this in. So let's just make a little mark so we know. We'll go, how about we'll go dense, medium, dense, medium, dense, medium. All right, and let's kind of orient it this way. So right here, we'll just put some little So we're going to work our way up to the top. Notice that I'm kind of getting myself down here to this corner. What that does is now we can fill this one. And so we won't, let's not put a million, let's just use the two. We kind of want to follow this curve a little bit. So what I think might be fun is just to emphasize that. Let's just kind of go like this. It's going to be a little wider out at the end. Hmm, I don't know if I like that. I don't know. Let's do something else. That's not, I don't think that's pretty. Let's put some little, little curly cues. That'll be a little bit more open. Okay, and then we'll just echo a little bit. And we'll come this way. Put it a, dif a different direction. And then we'll echo here, and we'll come a different direction. And we'll just put a little echo in there. And here I can just come down to the bottom, and we'll just repeat. So if we put a lot of different types of designs, we start getting a little chaotic. Come out a little bit because this one's a little bit wider. And we'll come back in over to here. So by kind of winging out a little bit on the bottom, that helped to fill up that space so it didn't look too you know, going all the way up on one side and then come all the way back down on another side. We kept it a little varied. Kind of did it in little sections. All right, so same thing. So maybe we can travel up a little bit on this one so we won't have the same exact swirl right in that same spot. Directions. And 
a little one right there so we can fill that in. Here we'll kind of fill in that space on the outside. Come down and get this part filled in right here. And if this part over here I need a little bit more, I can just come this way. I just went right on that same line. You can echo that. And we'll just put this one right here. Woo, did it. All right, let's see if we're a little bit far away. Let's see if we can get in a little tighter. So we only have two more to go and let's fill this one up and we want to kind of go to the top this time so we'll fill out towards the edges here a little bit and we'll leave some room to sneak back up to the top and we'll have to come back over here fill this in Right there, we'll kind of work our way back across a little bit again. Why are we going to the top on this one? I'll show you in just a second. Okay, so this part of this boundary is not completed. So now we're perfectly in position to complete this and then do this fill and then we'll be done with it. And we'll kind of tack it, make sure it's a nice clean line with the other one. Try and do our little swirl, come up a little bit. Tap, swirl. Make this one go this way. Okay. All right, I think we got all of the lines. Well, boy, they're really dense, both of them. Okay, well, let's talk about that. What could we do if we wanted to? make that a little different next time. Let's pull this out. I do think that that looks really dense. Let's turn it over because it is messy. It's hard to see what the impact is. But if that happens next time, what we can do is we can actually just put a little echo in between because it is pretty dense. The whole thing is, I think. It looks cute, right? But maybe we could just put a little empty echo right there and an empty echo right there, empty echo right there. And then that does close this space even more, but then you have a little breathing room. These kind of, I think, mesh together. Their difference is not enough. Or if we did a curvy design, then maybe it would be important to do one that was a little straighter and that would really give a different texture. These look very similar. So I think that maybe I wouldn't do that next time, but it's done now. So it's staying. <laughs> All right. So let's do one last thing before we close for today. I did add um, some sections. I'll kind of show you what we're doing. We still have this big section to fill. I'm not quite ready for that. And I've created this boundary right here. There's like a border section right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a smaller version maybe of this so that we can take this design and move it to another section of the quilt. And I'm going to try and take maybe another element of this design 
and move that over to another part of the quilt and then maybe do another pebbling or another swirl on another section of the quilt. So I think that we have enough designs in the quilt right now that we don't really need to create some more. So we'll just actually work with the ones that we have and use them in different ways. So the one thing I, I wanted to show you what we'll do right now is I need to put an echo around this, especially right here. If you see how this is open, the echo will make sure that this has a closure so any fill that we put in this area is not going to be weird right where that opening is. One of the things I absolutely love about the ruler foot is I can use that really, really easily in order to put that quarter inch echo in. If you want a bigger echo, you can use something called an echo guide or an echo ring and you can put that on your ruler foot and that will help you create a larger space, like a half inch or three quarter inch or even a one inch. So if the foot touches the stitch line right now, that means that the needle essentially is going to be a quarter inch away. So I'm just gonna try and make some smooth. And I don't care if they're perfect, it's fine. Just let them be what they are. Make sure I can hold everybody here. I need to get some grip. Grippy. There we go. Okay, and we'll just keep going. So look ahead. Just try to make it as smooth as you can. Now this one is much longer right here. So I might try to come up to the top a little bit and then see if I can maybe do a smoother curve with a ruler on that side because that's a really long curvature. I don't know, let's see, can we do it? Oh, uh, we did it all the way back down. But see, it's a long distance, so it starts getting a little bit more wonky when you have to travel such a long way. The echo is also good if you have a feather that's weird, doesn't have a pretty shape. This can help you clean it up a little bit. to make this a little narrower here. So I'll just come back and then we'll go the other way. Cause this right here, I do wanna split it. I don't wanna sew actually all the way into there. So I'm gonna just put that as a vein and then we'll just echo our way out here. And I love that this one's gonna go into that boundary right there. I'm totally fine with that. All right, let's see how we did. We're in the boundary here, so we'll just kind of cut it off because we can. And we can flip it so you can see it better. Love it. So what do you think? I like that this kind of closed that space so now right in here we can put some small fill and it will come all the way basically to here. So this, all of this, and I'll probably use white thread and maybe a hundred weight and put a little micro fill in that. And that's really going to punch down the feather on this outer edge. So um, let's see, I have two ideas. We can do micro fill or we can do linear fill, which would be like this. And because we want the feather to sort of be the, the piece that uh, looks what you're seeing, if we use a white thread here, what that does is the feather stays the visual piece. This is really busy. And if we do it in white, it'll reseed and make the feather stay on top. We could do it with pink. You know, it is a very much of a microfill and the texture will still show with the feather. But I think that 
I want that visual rest area, so I don't wanna fill this in with color right here because there'd be enough other things going on. So let's see how we did. Okay, I think we did good. So far, so good. Let's see. Um, I'm just gonna scroll through real quick, see if we have any questions so far. How are you guys doing today? Any questions so far? Did you have a good time? Point out the differences. Let's see, Susan, you said, can I point out the differences and then the word is covered. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they look the same to me too. I messed up. <laughs> no, I didn't, it's just fine. I agree with you, I think that those are too close. I think they need to be different and I think I would choose something different next time. So yeah, you're right, you called it. All right. All righty, well, so we did the three things today. We did the small little um, swirly and we did the microfill. We did the splitting up of the circle right here to create this outer boundary, which I love that so much. And hmm, I think I will maybe cut this off here too. I realized that I, I did my boundary into the frame right here. I think I'll probably take that out and let the frame stand alone because the whole point of the frame was to set this part off. I guess I was on autopilot and I just sewed right into it. But that's okay. You could do that if you want to. And, you know, out here I'll probably do um, another like a square or rectangle design and I want to make it intersect this so that it goes outside of the frame right here and comes in. So this will also have a little something like an on-point section right there. So, all right, well, that's it for today. We didn't have a really long session, but that's okay. I think that we want to keep these a little short and digestible. So I hope you had a good time. And I will probably not be around next week because I am going to be traveling, but I'll be back on the second Sunday for my uh, So Steady long arm event. So have a great week, you guys. Happy quilting.